Hi, this is Juby Provido, and you're listening to Contemplating the Rosary, where we talk about how to pray the Holy Rosary even better. In 104 episodes, over four seasons, we will explore a method of how to say the Rosary the way Pope St. John Paul II, Pope Paul VI, and other Rosary advocates recommend, and that's by contemplating the mysteries while we say the Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be. This podcast is based on the book Beyond the Veil, Contemplating the Mysteries of the Holy Rosary, available at Lazada in the Philippines and in print or Kindle on Amazon, wherever you are. Visit KindlingsPress.com for more information and where you can read and download the episode guide. This is episode 36 of the series, the 8th episode of season 2, and it's nice to have you back here listening in on how we can pray the rosary the contemplative way. Today, we'll explore the first luminous mystery, the baptism of our Lord in the River Jordan. In this episode, we'll explore the idea of Jesus as the new Jonah. If we imagine ourselves going to the baptism of John, the one thing we will surely notice is the abundance of water, and that plays a big role in the different parts of scriptures. For example, water is a source of life. The book of Genesis shows this to us by saying Eden is the source of water of all the earth. Psalm 1 also says plants near streams of water yield fruits and its leaves never wither. Our Lord even says He is the fountain of eternal life so that if you drink of His waters, eternal life will flow in you. While water is good, too much water is also bad. The flood in the story of Noah and the ark shows how water is a symbol of death. So in this context, our sacrament of baptism uses water as a symbol of death. When the minister plunges us under water three times or pours water over our head three times, it symbolizes that we die with Christ as he remained three days beneath the earth. After the last plunge, we arise and it is a symbol of rising with Christ in his resurrection, as we will do at the end of time. It is also a symbol that we are reborn as new creatures. While that baptism is true for the age of the church, which we call the time after Christ's ascension, here in the Jordan River, when our Lord is plunged under water, it might remind us of Jonah, especially when Jesus said, A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. You know, the story of Jonah is meant to be funny. Imagine God sends a reluctant prophet who runs away, then is swallowed by a large fish, and then regurgitated only to do what God says anyway. To better understand this, let's recall the story of Jonah in its entirety. So, God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh, which is Gentile territory. God sends Jonah to warn them of their impending destruction. Jonah, instead of going to Nineveh, he boards a ship that is going the opposite direction. Sometime in the journey, a violent storm breaks loose and threatens to capsize the ship. The passengers, who are very superstitious, think someone on the ship did something bad, which is why God is punishing them. To determine who the guilty person is, they draw lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. He admitted and took responsibility and confessed that he was running away from his duty to God. So he told them to throw him overboard so that only he would perish while the rest of the ship would remain safe. So that's what they did, and in today's words, he got cancelled. But it was also very generous of him that he offered himself to be killed so that the rest of them in the boat might live. As the story goes, the storm stopped after they threw him overboard, the ship was safe, and all those aboard survived. Jonah in the water, on the other hand, meant he was facing certain death. A large fish swallowed him and Jonah remained in its belly for three days before he was vomited out on dry land. Jonah eventually went to Nineveh, who told them God was angry and would destroy them. The king of Nineveh, having heard this, proclaimed a fast and days of repentance. God saw this and relented, and so they lived. We can see here Jonah as a type of our Lord facing certain death on the cross so that all aboard his boat, the church, would not have to die. If you read the story of Jonah, scriptures does not allude that Jonah was living inside the belly of the fish. This isn't the story of Geppetto and Pinocchio where they meet each other inside the belly of a whale as if it was a large cavern. No, Jonah was eaten and died. 
But just like Jonah, our Lord remained in the belly of the earth for three days before resurrecting. Just like Jonah, our Lord calls the Gentiles into the folds of his loving arms so that they can live. So in this mystery, when we imagine our Lord being plunged into the water of the Jordan River, we should see a man who is accepting death so that we may live. We can think of it as his first steps into his passion. He is using actions to silently say, Yes, pick me up and hurl me into the sea, and then the sea will calm down for you. It will be three years before humankind picks up our Lord and hurls him into the storm of the passion that eventually kills him. But let us imagine in this scene his feet getting wet as he steps into his passion. Let's use a bead or two, putting ourselves in the place of Jesus, bravely accepting his fate, and here, getting his feet wet. I think this is a good place to stop, and we'll pick it up next season. Don't forget to like this episode, click the subscribe button, and the notification bell icon so you'll be notified when the next episode drops. As always, this podcast is brought to you by thecatholictalks.com and kindlingspress.com, where you can read more articles on the Catholic faith and find more books on Catholicism. This has been Joby Provido. I'll say goodbye for now and please join me again next time when we can learn to pray the rosary better. Bye-bye.